Okay, you'll notice a couple of things we've done here. <laughs> this is about my second or third time filming this. Um, we have this rod here with a roller in it and a three pound brass weight. And that's just to hold a bit of pressure against the main lever that works your hydraulic pump control valve. I have the, the tool in the back there to hold the bell crank that holds the donkey dick back. Now, here is a homemade one I bought with some gear one time. So look, all, all I've done, they've picked up the holes there. There's about half an inch there. And what's that? Inch and an eighth by inch or something like that. So you can make that. There's nothing too difficult about that. Um, you probably just pop a half inch Allen key in there. All that does is make sure that the hydraulics cancel out before this rod, this bell crank hits the back housing hard. So that's done. Now, this little wedge here, that's a Litchfield tool number MFA720B. And look, all we're doing with that is on this um, response control pot, the, um, it's holding the, the plunger right forward. You can see the plunger moves back and forth and that controls your rate of drop. But for these adjustments, we put this in and that holds it forward. So you could make that, you could make that, and you could make that. No big deal. Okay, so the first thing we do is a draft control. And what they say with the draft control is the outside lever, the draft lever, um, I'll read it to you. Um, place the draft control lever between the two sector marks on the quadrant. So about in the middle of your quadrant, I can't film everything at once, so at about in the middle of your quadrant, there's two lines. Make sure your outer um, lever with the ball on the end is there. Then it says, um, place the position control lever in the transport position. Make sure the stop is at the end of its travel. So. Um, so the the trans the the other lever we're just putting right back right back as far as it'll go in the transport position. Then we loosen this little nut here. So we loosen that nut off, and this little screw we back right off, and that's all it is. That little bloke there. I'll put it back in a couple of threads, and. We just want that in a thread or so, so it's not touching anything here. So it's not pushing on that lever at all, so it has no reflection on that lever. Then this fella here, we need to loosen the lock nut. The half inch spanner does that. And then you'll see my little bit of paper here. What they're saying is up the top here, we adjust this. You can see as we go up, it gets the gap gets bigger. As we come down, the gap gets smaller. And they say two to four thou. Now, a piece of paper, this is a bit of a sticky note down there. So all we need to do is keep turning that. And you can just see it's just, just grabbing it there. So we bring our, we hold that in position where it is. and we lock that up, then we can just work it in there, it barely holds onto it. And you got to think what are they doing with these adjustments and by having such a fine adjustment here, what they're doing there is they're just making sure there's an air gap there so that this plunger has no reflection on this at this present time. So. That comes back. I'll just cycle it a couple of times, then we'll put a bit of paper in again and just make sure it's nothing's changed. Yeah, so that'll just hold it. So I can slide it in, but there's enough pressure there that it just holds it. So that's great. That's all we need. Okay, we've got to move on now to the position control. So place the draft control lever in the fully raised position. So that's the outside lever, so it comes in the fully raised position. Um, place the position control in the transport position. So, so this lever is back in the transport position once more. So the inside lever is all the way up, 
And for this, the outside lever is all the way up. Um, yeah, it said make sure this, this tool is in there, and that's okay, we're good with that. Okay, so now, if I get rid of some of those spanners, and it's the same story, but this time we have to move this little one. So, we'll bring this in. Okay, we've taken up the slack and you can see this is starting to move backwards now. Exact same adjustment. So if we get our little piece of paper here. That's just too tight, won't slide in. Yeah, that's a good adjustment. Okay, so we hold that there, tighten the lock nut up. We'll bring him back and forth a few times just to check our adjustment. That's loosened off just a little bit. But whether it's worth worrying about, I don't know, but we'll just make a tiny adjustment here. Yep. So we'll try and adjust that down. And that's it. That's all I can really do at the moment. Um, in the book it goes on to say, um, it, it goes on to um, pressure control springs and all that. We don't have any of that. So I think because of what we had with this all broken, um, I think that's all we really need to do in this instance under here. I've got a zippy tie there holding that shut, like I said. We can take this three pound weight away. Um, this housing here, look, and that's, I don't know, that, that's just, when, when you have the housing there, it's just in line with this fella here, so it's a straight pull. So you could make that yourself very easily, little roller there, and this piece here. Oh, there is a part number there, MFA272. And that's just a piece of angle iron. That's probably 10 to 12 mil, something like that. So they're just making sure that this, um, this comes back and sits on this for the position control adjustment because you can see as it, it moves some of these linkages so your adjustment would be out. Okay, so I'll just go handheld for a second. And so they've been all locked up. We can take this fella out, there's no need for that anymore. We will use that later, I believe. Now, I've got her on this bracket here and um, I can lift it over, but what I worked out when I pulled it apart was because of this roll frame here, there's no clearance there. You can see how the lever's in the road, so it's a real fiddle, so I'm not gonna film that. Um, I'm just gonna try and work with that as best I can to get this housing back over. Now I'll come around the tractor a little bit and you can see down in here I have tidied it all up. I'll see if I can bring a light in. So I've cleaned all the housing out. Actually I'll give that a bit of a, bit of a wipe. Um, I've cleaned the housing out. You can see on the pump there we have a brand new relief valve. Um, we have brand new oil sitting in there um, and we have a new suction screen sitting in there as well. 
So that's all good to go. Um, there's a couple of little adjustments that we will need to do once I get it in. Now, if we come back around again, you may notice on this roller, this little roller here, I've put a lock nut at the back of it. Now, there should be a little spring clip that sits on here that sits against the knurling that stops this, that, that roller there from turning. Now that's broken off on mine and I didn't want to replace the whole thing. So what I'm choosing to do is I've got a quarter UNF lock nut there. So I've got that sitting on there now, but when I put the top down, I'll loosen this off. I'll do any adjustments I need to with this screw and then lock that back up. So that way it won't come undone without me knowing about it. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think it should be all right, but next time you see all of this, um, and you can see it's all at the back of the tractor there with that leg, um, next time you see it, it'll be sitting back in place and we'll have a look through the side and see what we need to do from there.